time. Skid, ego, super ego. These are all graphics. And what's significant is that they are um, unlike a lot of the fictions, the interactive fictions at the time. It's the blend of word and image and the fact that on, on this page, in addition to the forward and back links, pages will have um, uh, hot links on words, which was the common uh, navigation mechanism at the time. And I'm going I'm to flip through a few of these to provide some sense of what they look and feel like. poetry. There are things that are clearly notes that are tied to particular events with dates. There are some visual transitional effects. There are cartoons. Zarathustra flakes sit down to an uber breakfast. So I think you get a sense, reading through this, this is not directly advancing a narrative. This is building up in slow, incremental drips the sense of who Newkirk is as a writer and as a character. So let's flip over to one of the tools that he used in the creation of this fiction is a set of fortune telling or oracle cards. And these are broken into four suits, not unlike the four suits in a standard deck of playing cards or tarot cards. But these are self, cosmos, gravity, and technology. And each of the four suits is represented by an icon, and they are arranged in a large um, diamond shape that can be navigated either through directly clicking on the left side of the large image is all hot links, the individual suit that we're in, or navigating with arrow keys in the bottom right. So each card is accompanied by a gloss. So card for William S. the borough, the beast bears its own burden, self-knowledge unweighs mortality. And to navigate from here, we can only go down because we're at the top card in the self house. Phantom limbs, so much depends on which end of the neuron you're on. Control, lady or the tiger, either choice is yours. Taliesin, from the Mabinogi. Temples glow, the bird, the fish, the man, all know. Entropy Messiah, the universe bears your fingerprints. I'm just going to flip to a couple of cards in other suits. So this is self some from the cosmos suit. Here is some from gravity. And here are some from technology. Clearly, Arthur Newkirk lived in central New York at one point where Fryhofer's chocolate chips were a significant fact of life. Genius, of course, looks in a low-res, two, uh, one-bit graphic way, or should look, a bit like Nikola Tesla. Final cuts 
is, as it says, a history in lyrics, Arthur Newkirk and the Reptiles. And this was, again, at a time before the World Wide Web, the idea that a musical group would create a hypertext environment in order to uh, capture information that would normally be in a program book or in minor notes. Uh, this was an attempt to create an artifact, a hypertextual artifact, in which narrative is embedded. So it is not telling a story, it is an artifact that one finds within a story, something that Buddy Newkirk was part of. Um, Final Cuts, copyright 1990. Um, this is, by all appearances, an actual published um, hypercard stack containing uh, lyrics and information about the band, the reptiles. And again, the navigation at the bottom. Help, print, write to file, find, contents, all of these navigation items were things that were created for this fiction at a time before the web had set up navigational affordances that we take for granted. Dedicated to the reptiles, thunder lizards one and all, and of course to Emily. So if we had read through the entire writer's brain, we would have found some previous references to Emily, but that was the title of that first cassette, the story of Emily and the time machine. So if we're trying to figure out this mystery, we're now seeing that there is, in addition to an Arthur, there's an Emily here somewhere. And we may, we may learn about something about her in the stack. This is, has both front matter, beat the reptiles, headshots, the chronology of the reptiles, and a discography. So here's the first, the first cut as it is. Here, such as it is, is the history of the reptiles, and one particular reptile, Buddy Newkirk. I've made several assumptions about you. Yes, you, the reader, first is that you have a Macintosh. That's a big assumption, but since the reptiles worked at the intersect of art, zines, and SF, a large percentage of our audience was at home in the Matrix. And we have to remember, when we talk about the Matrix here, this would be referring to Luke Gibson as opposed to the later films. This was prior to the uh, Brothers. Second, that you know something about the rep's music. Without that a priori knowledge, I suspect this compilation will be something less than coherent. I haven't tried beyond some minimal sketchy notes to indicate either the genesis or cross linkages. You probably know that already. Last, that you have a certain degree of intellectual rigor, because, as you know, I lie. Or, let me put it this way. I say things which I do not necessarily believe or which I do not think are true simply for their exploratory value. Believe everything, at least temporarily. We may have heard that somewhere. But believe nothing forever. Since I put this together myself, you only have my word that it's accurate. But then, if you were interested in objective truth, you certainly wouldn't be listening to the reptiles. There is probably more to be said, but I can't imagine why. Music speaks louder than words. Music, then. And there are several screens of history about the band called the Reptiles. There are pictures of members of the group. Musicians named Neil and Vox and Moo and Will and Art. There are chronology pages. and albums. Reptile Fear, Happy Over Raptor, something called Magic Warfare, something that looks like a off-label product called Black Label Bastard from Blood Pumping Stumps, which is from the big punk period.